Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV, and you're not gonna believe it, but I have finally designed, invented, and installed a capsized writing pole to a Hobie 16. Let's take a look and see how I've gone about it and if it works. So, the idea with the capsize writing pole is so that if you are sailing solo, you'll have more leverage, so you're more likely to be able to write the boat without any assistance. Of course, before we can do this, we're gonna need a few items. We're starting off, of course, with the pole. This is the bottom section of an RDM windsurf mast. RDM means reduced diameter. I think this is better than the standard diameter mast, which wouldn't be quite as easy to grab. Now we're using the bottom section. This part where the mast joins is what we're gonna put at the front beam end because this is a little bit stronger. And I've drilled a hole through here and we're gonna attach this using a rope. This is a four mil high quality rope with a Dyneema core. And this is measuring one meter 40, this piece of rope. So one meter 40 on the shopping list, Dyneema. The pole itself, this is one meter 86 long, but to be honest, I would have gone for a bit longer, maybe two meters, maybe even a bit more still to get a bit more leverage. But this just happens to be what we had around to use. At the other end of the pole, we've actually got an old mast extension in here, which um, is actually stuck in here, which is quite convenient because this is going to give this section of mast a bit more strength. And I think it's a good idea to have a bit more strength here. You could try it without, but um, I like the reassurance of having that there. I've drilled a bigger hole through the mast extension to take the main rope. This is gonna be the rope that supports it. Now this is a six mil rope, two meters 80 long. And what I'm using on the rope as stoppers is the same as what we have on the trapeze, but you could use uh, balls like this, but I'm using these dog bone stoppers just so it's adjustable so I can get the length right without having to untie a very tight knot. And then for the takeaway system, we're just gonna have a small block, but you could use a stainless ring and we're gonna tie that either to the back beam or the trampoline, just using a piece of line. Doesn't need to be anything special. The rope for this, again, we want quite a thin rope because it's gonna be quite long. So I'm using this four mil again, and this is five meters long, five meters. And then the ball, we're gonna use on here. We'll see what we do with that in a minute. If you were gonna do a proper job, you'd also want to have a cleat, like this uh, is a clam cleat, I believe, um, which you'd mount on the front beam, but we're just gonna use one of the cleats that's already on the beam for now, because this is just a test. We've got this rope in the middle. I'm now gonna take it all the way round like this. And then I'm gonna pass both parts of the rope around the front beam, either side of the mast foot. And then we're coming back and we're just gonna tie that off here. I'm gonna use a reef knot But then to add a bit of security, I'm just gonna put just one small knot in each end of that reef knot. Then one piece I didn't mention on the shopping list is we're gonna need a further two small pieces of rope. And these ones, I've just tied them into a loop. On the Hobie 16, we've got this part of the dolphin striker here, which is just passes inside. And then that loop, finishes just above the gunnel, just on the deck there. 
Okay, so if you want to tie a rope to itself to make a loop or to tie two ropes together, which are the same type, I believe this knot is called a blood knot. And what we're gonna do is we'll tie one end around the other piece, thus, and then we'll do the same with this one, like this. And then when you pull it together, that, became, that becomes a knot, which is so reliable, not only will it not come undone, but you probably won't be able to untie it if it's been under any load. And of course, we're gonna to have to put the same loop at the other hole as well. And then this six mil rope, I've passed it through the hole in the end of the pole here. And I've just tied a figure of eight knot just to stop that from sliding through. Okay, and from there, we'll take the top one. And that's just gonna pass through the loop that we've put up there. And then we can pull it up and then we can now see how high we want to put the pole. We want to have it so it is slightly elevated, but this is where your own bit of research is going to need to come in. So at the moment, that is way too high. So this is why I'm using the trapeze dog bone adjuster, because it's a lot easier to adjust this to get the length right rather than to keep having to untie knots. I'd say that's about right. Okay, so that measurement is 140 to the end of the pole, but of course that does depend on what length your pole is. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. The pole is quite clearly up at an angle, which means you're gonna get more leverage and you won't be floating in the water quite as early. We can put the bottom piece through, but before I do that, I'm just gonna make sure but that adjuster is in the same position as the top one. So then we don't have to adjust that later if we know that the top one is right. Okay, so now this can go through the loop and then we're going to tie these two ends of the rope together. I'm gonna to use this knot again, this blood knot, and it's gonna be on the underside of the pole so then that means when the pole is retracted, it's gonna hold this rope up, keeping it out of the water. Okay, so then for the line that's gonna secure the pole in the away position, I've tied this through another hole that I've drilled in the end there. And now this line is gonna come backwards. And I've attached the small block to the underside of the trampoline. Through that small block, and we've gone to the front beam. We've gone around the front beam. And for the convenience of this video, I've just used one of the cleats for the jib traveler, just for testing. And then I've put a ball on the rope there with a knot in it, which means that the pole can't come any further forwards. So it's not gonna just be sat pulling against the dolphin striker too much. Okay, so now the pole is fitted to the boat. It's time just to see how it works. So we've capsized. For accuracy, I'll stand on the hull. We now want to get the pole out so we can uncleat the pole securing line. And in fact, to get the pole out, we're gonna have to go behind a little bit just to get it out and then we'll come back forwards put the rope over the top and then we'll just take this top dog bone or whatever stopper you've used and we're going to put that through the loop so that that is secured and then we can work our way to the end of the pole and then the boat starts coming upright. Nice, but that's all good and well seeing it work on the land, but it's on the water where we're really gonna know if it works. But then before we do that, let's just look at how we're gonna put it away afterwards. So after the boat's upright, 
we're going to just go forwards, pull the line that brings it back, but we just want to drop the pole down so we'll unlock this dog bone, take the pole so it's in the middle of the trampoline, pull that one tight, pop it in the cleat, and there she is, secured, very nice. But let's take it on the water. Okay, and we're going down. Oh my goodness. And once again, we've capsized, taking one for the team. Although it is Vasiliki Bay, so even though it's October, the water is pretty warm. Getting onto the boat. Again, when we get on the boat, we're trying not to affect the rudder assembly. I'm going to leave the traveller in the middle. Uh, it's not so much wind. Just getting organised. Hi, Mum. Um, letting the jib off. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to turn the boat into the wind. At the moment, the wind is coming directly from behind. So I'm just standing a little bit forwards and as you can see, the boat is slowly turning. If we try to pull the boat up with the wind in the wrong direction, then we're fighting against the wind. Speaking of the wind at the moment, the wind is, uh, what would you say, Rick? How much wind? Uh, Five knots? Yeah, four. four knots, that's good for the test. I'm weighing in, uh, uh, what would you say, Rick? about uh, 90 kilos, very good. Yeah, about 90 kilos. Um, I think so before we try with the pole, let's just try with the writing line just to show um, if there is any difference. If I could pull this up straight away with the writing line, I'll be quite surprised, but then it, it will make the test a bit of a waste of time. All right, so on the writing line, I already know that this is not going to work. Wasting my time and everybody else's. So I'll come back onto the boat. Let's get rid of this. She's obsolete. We've got new technology on board. We've got the pole. So releasing the cleat here to dispatch the pole. Pole dispatched. Now bringing this dog bone up to the line here where we had it before so it doesn't jump out. We've got a bit of angle there. Okay, I'm quite excited about this, but also I don't know what to expect. Are we winning? Okay. I do feel a bit more optimistic what the mainsail. Okay, so in the light wind, Rick is suggesting perhaps to sheet the mainsail in, which should help to get it out of the water a bit. So let's really crank that bad boy in tight. And then maybe it won't act like quite such a bag of water. Bringing the pole back out. But, uh, Yeah, so we can see there is some water on the sail, but if I stand on the bow, thus spin the boat a little bit more, maybe we can get rid of some of that water. Okay, let's have another go anyway. Maybe the pole, do you think the pole needs to go up at all? All right, we'll just, we'll just try it with the, Okay, I can't help but think if the pole was a bit longer, we'd perhaps be looking a bit more, a bit more uh, likely. Yeah, so no cigar there. Let's try letting the mainsail and the traveller all the way out. So then any water will just drain off the sail because as well as the weight of the rig, we've got the weight of the water on the sail as well. I'm just gonna come forwards a bit to try to ooch it round into the wind 
a bit more. Okay, the wind is very light, so what you'd be doing capsizing in this amount of wind, for starters, who can say? Okay, still, I'm not feeling, I think the tip is still wet. A longer pole would certainly be a good feature, but, um, and because the wind is so light, standing on the bow to turn the boat into the wind isn't having such a huge effect. So, I think we're gonna cheat, we are gonna cheat. This is the uh, bonus of having uh, the Wild Wind uh, Rescue Service on your side when you're trying these things out with wind which isn't strong enough. Okay, so the wind is coming from the south pretty much, I'd say at the moment. All right, let's give that a go just there. So now, hopefully we'll get a bit of wind under the sail. <laughs> ah! Is it coming? <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's not coming. Okay, so um, what we're doing now, this isn't really helping with the test, but it's just seeing if it is effective. We're just getting the water off the mainsail to see if we can right the boat and what the experience is like. I'm sure with a longer pole, we'd have a greater effect, but still, I've got a feeling I'm going to be popping back in to get the bag. <laughs> or should, I'll just go for it like this. If you lift your buttocks. <laughs> nah, no good. Okay, I think we can say that the pole, which is just shorter than two meters is not enough to bring the boat upright so i think what we'll do is i'll get rick just to lift the tip of my mast and then we'll pop to the beach we'll get the bag and then we'll try the same thing with the bag because uh i'm a big fan of the bag as you know so i'm going to try the bag just to show if there is a difference, if the bag works better than the pole, the pole was the right palaver fitting as well. Spent it most, I've spent most of the day fitting it to the boat, only to find it doesn't really work. Well, no, it doesn't really work. It doesn't work um, in this situation, which is a real shame because I was hoping that it would work. I'll be interested to see where I end up when we come upright with the pole. Going to be in a different position to normal after a capsized writing. All right. Okay, all right, I'm, I see. I climbed the pole a little bit there as we're coming back upright. Okay, so now I just need to unnotch that dog bone, pull the pole retrieval rope. So it's time to go down the, for another capsize, taking one again for the team on Joyrider TV.
always favouring the backwards capsized as the most controlled method there. So if you capsize, you ever find yourself in this position, try to get out of here as quickly as you can because uh, if the boat inverts, then you'll have the trampoline on your head and uh, we don't want that. When you're coming around the back, try not to kick the runners up. We've talked about opposing rudder lock before and it is not a laughing matter. Oh no. All right, so we're back on the boat. There's the pole. We've already tested that. Didn't work. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna see what else we've got on board. To be honest, Ricky has been back to the beach to pick up the bag. So I should have a, uh, oh yeah, here she is. Woohoo! Here's the bag. Bit of an upgrade from the last video. This is actually some sort of diver's thing. It says Aqualung on it. Just like the Jeffro Toll song uh, that's occasionally been getting uh, done, yeah. All right, so I've just put it in the water while I get this bad boy attached. Just untangling the purchase system a bit. Check out the previous writing the boat with the bag video for more information. But what we've got is a, a bag. I've mentioned this bag a couple of times now. Surely you believe me. Um, and then I'm just gonna shackle the tackle. I'm gonna shackle the tackle onto the writing line. I'm not really paying much attention to where we are at the moment because we only use the bag or the pole, but the pole doesn't work, in um, light winds. If the wind was stronger, we wouldn't need these things. The wind would help us get the boat upright. Okay, so now I'm just gonna spread the bag open a bit so I can fill it with water. It says, on the bag that the maximum weight we can get in here is 50 kilos. Surely that is going to be enough. Oh, that is what I call a bag full of water. I tell you, woohoo, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm pretty convinced that bag has got water in it now. So now I'm going to use the purchase system to hoist it up as far as it will go. Just cleaning it off there. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down low, get, I don't actually know what I'm gonna do just yet, but pushing the bag out, getting it as far out as I can by pushing it with, Taking a little bit of persuasion. But she is coming. I think the trouble I've had is that the rope on the bag is a little bit too long. But again, this wind is very light and uh, now of course the bag is floating. All right, sorry about that, bag didn't work. Okay, I love the bag, let's make it work. Um, so I'm just going to move the attachment point on the rope so it's right up by the hull. Good. Sorry, I hold the bag to the pole. Wow, double whammy. All right, so I'm gonna hoist the bag up again. Right, bag is hanging. Now I'm just gonna get the boat round into the wind a bit more, because now we've got the wind blowing onto the bottom of the trampoline. 
that, that is just not going to work. work. So, so we're sinking the bow. Oh, bow cam's gone under. Dark times for the bow cam. Yeah, I've said it before, in the lighter winds, it does take a long time for the boat to come round. So it really is worth not capsizing if the wind is too light, because it takes ages to sort your life out afterwards. So I'm just gonna drop the bag down a little bit. Let's try that. All right, so, the bag starting off by sitting on the hull. Let's see how that works. So I want to be able to get myself out straight with the bag behind. That's the spot. Okay, I just had to lengthen the rope a bit. But of course, once the bag goes in the water, it's not effective anymore. Right, I'm just going to come back a little bit. Okay, now climbing the rope, grabbing the hole, and finally, we're back upright. Whew. All right, that was uh, a bit more of a challenge than, uh, than I'd set out for. But um, that was the trick was getting the bag, the rope on the bag, exactly the right length before starting to pull the boat upright. When the rope was too short, it meant, oh. When it was too short, it meant that uh, I couldn't extend my body fully meaning I wasn't getting as much weight out. When the rope was too long, it meant the bag was still in the water. So get the length of your rope right for the bag. So the bag is just resting on the hull before you push it out. That must be the trick. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I'll try this again with a longer pole when I find a longer pole, but with the one meter 86 pole, no, the pole doesn't work in uh, four to five knots of wind. Thank you very much. I've been Joe for Joyrider TV. It's been Ricky Nielsen on pole cam from the speedboat. And uh, hopefully we'll be back soon with some more whew, when we recover from this one. Thank you very much. Woohoo! Mineshaft.